Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our 2013 NFL Draft Recap Show, where we're going to talk to some of our football game plan analysts and get their opinions on the winners, losers, and some surprises from this past April's draft. So first, let's start off with our senior draft analyst, Chris James. We're joined here by our senior draft analyst, Chris James, about to give us his thoughts on the 2013 NFL Draft. Now, Chris, a lot of players were selected, 254 to be exact. I want to ask you, who do you think, quote-unquote, won the draft? Who are some teams that had some outstanding draft selections this weekend? Now, I'm going to ask you to go with the team that really needed to win the draft, considering the division they're in, and that was the Arizona Cardinals. I think they knocked it out the park. They've really addressed multiple needs, and I think they hit on every pick that they made in this draft. Now, when you look at one of the picks, Tyron Matthew gets a lot of buzz. How do you think he'll fit in that Cardinals defense? The Cardinals defense played excellent football last year. They're a young, aggressive style of defense, and that's what Matthew has pretty much hung his hat on his whole career. He can help out in a position of need, which is the slot corner, and also at safety, uh, where he can add depth and match up with those tight ends who are pretty much oversized receivers at this point. Yeah, you get a guy that can fill three needs for your defense. You got to like that selection. Who's on the team that did very well this past draft? You know, I'm going to stay in the same division. I'm going to go with the St. Louis Rams. Uh, you looked at the Rams, they were awful two years ago. Jeff Fisher comes in, did an admirable job going 781. This year, he got what they needed, explosiveness. I think they averaged about 6 points, 6.9 points a game at one point a couple of years ago. Just awful. Now, they bring in guys like Tavon Austin, a guy who's going to turn it up, couple him with Chris Givens, I think they knocked it out the park as well. And then they get a guy later on in Stedman Bailey. How does he fit, and why did he fall so far in the draft? You know, Stedman Bailey's an interesting uh, case. This kid, all he did was use his hands. He was actually a better receiver than Tavon Austin. Tavon Austin's just a heck of an athlete who plays so well in different ways. Bailey didn't have as great of a combine as guys like Marquise Goodwin or even Tavon Austin himself. Uh, and you look at the last thing that they saw, you know, that sticks in your mind, and that was the pinstripe bowl against Syracuse. Didn't have a great game. Those things probably dropped his draft stock. And now let's look at the flip side. There are some teams that didn't do as well. Uh, who are some of those teams that you look at their drafting like, you know what, what were you thinking, some head scratches? You know, it's the team that I really have big hopes for this team. I, I think that they've been trying to make themselves a playoff roster the last couple of years, and I commend them. That was the Buffalo Bills. I think that they, I could see what they were trying to do. They just seemed to miss on some of their picks. And let's look at the biggest pick that they had. You know, they traded back, got E.J. Manuel. How do you think that will work out for those guys this season? You know, and Geno Smith is supposed to be the first guy going. Uh, everyone's going to say that he's a better fit for the scheme. I think that he'll fit fine in the scheme. Uh, the selection area is a little bit of concern. But I'm going to hope that Buffalo was looking to trade back again later in the first round, pick up some more picks, and get their guy. But they had to pull the trigger. They like him, and I like you sticking to your guns. But I think that there's better quarterback options than E.J. Manuel at that point. Definitely. Let's hope it works out for, for that team. It'd be good to see the AFC East get back to what it was when we were growing up. Uh, is there another team that also didn't do as well as you would like? And unfortunately, I have to stick in the same division and in my state of Florida, and that's the Miami Dolphins. You know, I give teams credit for going after what they want. You saw the Rams do the same thing going after Austin. Uh, just don't understand why they traded up to go get Deion Jordan. He wasn't head and shoulders above other players at the same position that they could have stayed pat and gotten a quality player at 12. And when you look at the uh, the trade to move up to get Jordan, they gave up a second round pick. Do you think they did well enough in the back end of their draft to, to change your opinion just a little bit? You know, and I really had high hopes for them on day two when they picked Jamar Taylor. And you get that value. Taylor was slated to be probably the fourth corner taken, late first round, early second round. And they got him midway through the second round. So you said, okay, they're going to do some good things. Then their next pick they missed on, getting Dallas Thomas. They were going after the correct thing, interior line help. But when you still have guys like Barry Jones and other talented players on the board, it kind of hurts you. And they did similar things as the draft went along. Yeah, and Barry Jones would actually fit in perfect for what they want to do. A versatile guy that has played all across that offensive line. Now, we have a draft that's full of surprises each and every year. This year, it was a surprise that 
Geno Smith fell out of the first round. So what were your surprises in this year's draft? One well, was actually I didn't expect, and I think that's part of the reason why this happened. The Dallas Cowboys, America's team, made a quote-unquote safe play. They didn't make the big splash they usually like to make, getting uh, Frederick out of uh, Wisconsin. I love the pick. You just paid Tony Romo a, a, a buttload of money. You just signed another running back in the draft. You have DeMarco Murray. You needed help up the middle. If you can improve that interior and get a guy who's going to be a mainstay, you did your job. Yeah, I actually like that selection as well. It is so funny to see these guys go with the interior offensive line because they know that's what they need. And if you're not strong in the middle of your O-line, as if you're not strong in the middle of your D-line, you're going to struggle a lot in this league. What's another surprise that, that really jumped out at you? It's like, wow, I can't believe I just witnessed that. Okay. Uh, well, actually, one of the surprises that kind of it shocked me on the back end. I didn't realize until the draft was over. Uh, there's a school that had more draft picks than the following powerhouses, USC, Oregon, uh, Ohio State, Michigan, Clemson, Texas a Texas, and that's Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights had six draft picks, and definitely that's, doing their thing. That's crazy, because when you look at, and I live up here in this area, in the New York City area, when you look at Rutgers, you see a team that has... Uh, a bevy of high school talent in the state of New Jersey. A lot of those guys were going off to Penn State, going up to Syracuse, going out west to Wayne Jarrett, went out west to USC. Now those guys are staying at home, and now that Rutgers is moving to the Big Ten, look for Rutgers to be a, a quiet powerhouse, if that makes sense, in the Big Ten with all the talent they have here in state. Now, every year there's some talented that some talented players that don't get selected and some end up on NFL rosters. Who are some undrafted free agents that you want people to keep an eye on to possibly be on the NFL roster come September? I don't know how this guy didn't get drafted. He's a model of production on a big time program and he slipped through the cracks for 254 picks and that's Chase Thomas. He got signed by the New Orleans Saints. It changed schemes uh, with Rob Ryan coming in. I think that he would be what they need as that guy, he's played in a similar style defense in college. Look for Chase Thomas to make this roster. Yeah, that's a great selection. This is the guy that you would really give a third or fourth round grade to and expect him to go on, get drafted, and be highly productive for many years. In fact, he went undrafted. is criminal. Another guy that went undrafted that caught my attention and want to get your opinions on is Derek Rogers out of Tennessee Tech, formerly of the University of Tennessee. Went to Buffalo. How do you think he'll fit in that offense, do you think he'll be on a roster on that roster come September? And it's really interesting that Buffalo finally got something. I'm not gonna say completely right, but they got it right. Buffalo has missed at this position. While they drafted guys who uh, play a different style, more slot type guys like TJ Graham or even Marcus Goodwin this year, they get a guy who can play outside at X position. Uh, they've missed guys like Donald Jones in the past. Ryan uh, Roosevelt. This kid, if they use him correctly and give him a chance, has the opportunity to make this team and play opposite of Stevie Johnson. And you know what's scary to think about Derek Rogers, Stevie Johnson, and in the slot, Robert Woods. That's dangerous. And also Scott Chandler uh, as the tight end. So, I mean, you got a lot of options. Hopefully they can get it all together and gel as one unit and get ready to go in 2013. Chris, appreciate you joining us. You can check Chris out on his radio show, the Football Game Plan Draft Prospect Analysis Show, every Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time at blogtalkradio.com slash football game plan. And also follow him on Twitter at CJFlorida9.